first question I really liked. It's what are your thoughts on designers being seen as a jack of all trades type of creative? At my job, for example, I'm expected to work on everything from launching a website, creating daily videos to designing flyers, all under the graphic designer job description. I feel like there's kind of two answers to this. I think being uh, well-rounded is good, especially in your freelance career or when you're working as a employee, it's good to be able to offer a lot of different stuff and be good at design, video, whatever other things you're good at. However, I think the double-edged sword of that is that sometimes I think people can pack so much work into this graphic designer role that it can become maybe exploitive from the employer. Like they expect you to know design, 3D, editing. And like you kind of see those uh, memes and stuff online where it's like an entry level or junior level graphic design position. And it says like three to five years experience. You need to know 3D editing, rendering, graphic design, typography, web design, UI design. And it's like all video editing, all these things packed into one. And I think that can be dangerous. However, I do think it's good to kind of be well-rounded and know how to do a lot of things. But also on the other side, specializing is important too. I think there's two approaches you can do. You can be kind of a Swiss army knife creative that knows how to do a little bit of everything, or you can specialize and come into the camp that is really good at a specific thing and people come to you just for that. I think that approach is better in the freelance world and the other approach is better when you're working as an employee. This next question is, do you have any tips on getting commissions when you have a small online presence. A lot of people ask me things like how do I get more projects or followers or jobs through the internet and it's really hard for me to answer that question because I don't I haven't seen a massive uptick in the projects I get parallel with the size of any of my following. A lot of the work I get is from repeat business, emails, working with people in like different industries and then referring me to other people. The hardest part is just trying to put yourself out there and getting those first few jobs. From there it seems like stuff starts to kind of expand and all all work together through this like web of people that you meet I would just be consistent and put out your best work also put out the type of work that you want to be doing if you're interested in logo design put tons of logo design on Twitter Instagram make up personal projects things like that don't do work that you're not that interested in because you don't want to be approached for that another thing is you can cold email people try stuff like that out I actually made a video a while back all about how to find different clients you can check that out I'll link it in the description below what printer do you use for your poster or graphic design work. So for how I make my actual prints, the high quality ones that I sell, I made an entire video on that. I'll also link that below. You can watch that. The gist of that is I just print on high quality paper and I show in that video how to set it up and everything. But in terms of some of the texturizing and the stuff I print just to scan back in and edit and manipulate to, you know, post as final designs on Instagram or Twitter or whatever it may be, I either just print on this kind of basic Pantone laser printer. It's not anything super fancy. It costs like 80 bucks and I also have an HP inkjet color printer but I like using that because it creates some beautiful kind of grain and textures but it's honestly a ripoff it costs you know I don't know 20 bucks or something 10 bucks for uh, one of the ink cartridges and it seems like I can only print like 10 or 20 pages of full color that's just not really you know gonna do it for me so I usually stick to printing in just black and I like printing on colored paper and stuff but I do have um, a link always in the description of my videos to an, it's like an Amazon link that is link to all the different gear and stuff I have. So if you want to check that out, what is your favorite type of music to listen to when designing? So honestly, I think I like that question because I've noticed that what I like to listen to when I'm working isn't necessarily my favorite type of music. It's in the top five, but best for that. I really like instrumental stuff because sometimes I feel like, you know, the lyrics can be a little bit maybe distracting. Um, there's this Perseus playlist on SoundCloud that my homie Trevor showed me and it's probably one of my favorite mixes ever. A bunch of cool house tracks and stuff and it's so good and I'll I'll try to link that below too and I listen to that all the time on repeat it's like about an hour and a half but there's something I really like about it the way it flows is perfect and um, then in general I listen to a lot of lo-fi um, house techno things like that that are kind of get you in this flow state and zone without being overly like distracting um, I also like to listen to jazz and blues um, those kind of genres are stuff that I really like uh, both through Spotify or the vinyls I have for when I'm working and designing what's your preparation process like for the podcast questions scheduling researching etc sometimes it's strenuous sometimes it's easy I think it depends on the level of how much I know the person beforehand if it's my friend and I know a lot about them probably not as much preparation or if it's someone that I really really look up to someone like Aaron Draplin for example I had so many questions just ready to go in general I do some research online dive deep into their Twitter or Instagram find stuff to talk about find points of interest that I want to know and I write down kind of an outline of questions and I 
try to get to all of them. But if I don't, that's fine because I'm also I really want the conversation to flow. So I don't try to force in anything that's not feeling like it's going to work. And then for scheduling, I just use like my Google calendar and email or message people and ask them if these dates work. And I use this software called Remotely to actually record the videos and all of it works pretty easily. And I'd say between editing, scheduling and research, each podcast takes about six to eight hours to produce. Okay. So how do you manage your time? I guess that's a pretty perfect segue. Honestly, I really just use Google Calendar. That is a huge thing I owe some of my time management to because I it's very flexible. I like the color coordination. I'm someone that's really likes to organize everything and it makes me feel more comfortable and in going into my work day knowing how much time I allot for each thing. Because you know, there's this like theory where stuff takes as long as the time you allot for it. So if you allow yourself two hours to work on something, you're more than likely to get it done in that two hours. But if you give yourself four hours, you'll probably waste the whole four hours working on that same thing. So I try to break stuff out in levels of importance. And I also like to have uh, what I do first is the most important thing. So let's say one day I have to work on a freelance project, edit a video and email some people back. I'll do the freelance project first in the morning from like 10 to two or however long it takes because that's the top priority. And even if I don't get to that other stuff, I did my main thing. And to me, that's a success. And if I do the other stuff, it's just a bonus kind of icing on the cake. Overall, I would just find a time schedule that works for you and be consistent with it and don't overwork yourself though and just find what works for you don't let anyone tell you it's right or wrong or however it works all good favorite movie poster this one was hard i was trying to think of it a little bit beforehand but just off the top of the head the one i always gravitate to is vertigo the vertigo poster by saul bass like his movie posters are just insane looking at all of them is just like i wish we made movie posters like this still everything is those big floating heads marvel star wars style but some of these flat designed like obscure shapes that he used to use and create were so good the man with the golden arm to exodus he's made so many cool ones i also really like the warriors poster i think that one might be biased though just because i like the movie so much so, so i guess i'd say vertigo warriors kill bill ones like that i really like how did the western digital project happen um so i did this project with western digital which was super cool honestly they let me do a lot of analog stuff and like experiment they even sent me an eight hard drive to break apart and scan in and stuff to make this cool poster of all these different angles of the motherboard and stuff. Basically this agency just hit me up and they wanted me to work on this project for this campaign they were doing with Western Digital. They want to get more into the creator and design and art space so they let me just make some stuff and pitch them ideas that I thought were cool and it paid well. Everything went smooth. There was barely any revisions. They were really cool or at least the agency was and I really liked how they let me embrace more analog stuff and it was pretty nice and validating to be able to do like that experimental stuff I do for fun actually for a real client and for money so that was cool what do you think contributed most to your YouTube growth one specific thing that grew it by a few thousand subscribers I think is probably the day in the life video it's nothing special it's like 40,000 views or something it's not anything like monumental but it is my most viewed video and it did help a lot and I think people saw that they were able to go back in and kind of binge stuff which is really nice I think the problem I always had was having something maybe go like viral or pop off. I've always been consistent. I think that's helped with the growth. And whenever anything does get some traction and gets pushed out farther than just the subscribers, I think people see it, they like it, and then they go back into the content and kind of, we have a big, nice back catalog for people to watch with the podcast, tutorials, talking videos like this, all that stuff. So I would just say consistency, getting better with each video, like really, really trying, even if it's just 1% to grow each time, get better and better. Working on thumbnails, more getting more annoying with them maybe or youtube-ish uh, that helped and trying to work on titles click through rate all that kind of nerdy youtube stuff but in general i think it's just the consistency and trying to get better and putting out stuff you know on a consistent schedule whether it be every week every two weeks every month i think that really helps creativity lie in the ui ux design world compared to graphic design so i actually have a video a podcast dropping this week with frank bach from headspace he's the lead product designer of headspace wonderful app that will be a good one for you to listen to if you're interested in that kind of UI space. In general though, I think there's creativity that you can be in all types of design. You know, there's so much stuff you can do and there's so many different avenues you can take. I think maybe it might be a little bit more logical and system based to work in that field because I, I've done some app design and web design and user research and it's a bit more uh, scientific and like academic feeling, but there's still a lot of stuff you can do in terms of creativity. I think it really just depends on if you're interested in that. You really need to like that stuff. 
stuff, but there's good jobs from it, especially out here. It pays well. And I think you can bring your own level of creativity to any position you get into. Is job security a thing in the design world? It could be less than other industries, that's for sure. Like engineering or uh, the different STEM programs, medical, I think those are a lot more in demand. However, I think job security to an extent, as much as you make it, you know, you have to make yourself valuable. You have to make yourself secure by offering your services in an efficient and effective way, being valuable as an employee or as a freelancer and constantly getting better and learning with the times so you stay relevant. I wouldn't let that kind of stuff discourage you. Um, every job has different levels of security and, you know, it comes up and down with the economy, but there's obviously a lot of different things to take into account with job security in terms of background and um, systematic problems and all this stuff. But if you want to do design, I wouldn't let something like that scare you. Just work hard and I think anyone can figure it out in this world. Why do you do what you do? What's your inner drive? I mean, that's like an existential kind of question, but I always feel like I've kind of had like a chip on my shoulder, like growing up more in like a lower income, more poor background and kind of not really knowing what I want to do and just trying to work hard and work hard and always get out of like what I, where I, where I was from. I think I've always tried to like go the extra mile and work hard. And that's what kind of helps me. Once I got in design, it's like, I didn't need that as much. It helps, but I really like it. And I think just being able to create and do something I love every day and elevate myself from where I came from is enough drive, like more than ever to help me just kind of push through when, when things are hard. Do you think all designers should get into YouTube? And honestly, no, but the people that are interested in it, you definitely should. I think it's very uh, rewarding. It's valuable for you. It's valuable for other people. It can help you in your own design stuff, get you more clients. It's, I mean, learn how to edit. I never knew how to do that at all. It's just giving me a different perspective on kind of marketing yourself in this different world uh, besides like the apps we all use, like Instagram and Twitter. But I don't think it's for everyone. If you don't have any video ideas or you don't want to make videos or you don't want to be in front of the camera, then don't do it. Don't bother. It's, it's hard enough to grow in this space that if you're not interested in it, you're going to get burnt out quick. That being said, if you have any interest in it, even if you've been thinking about wanting to do it a little bit, I say go for it. Try it out. Try out like 10, 20 videos. After that, if you don't like it, you can do something else, but give it, give it a shot and see how it goes. What podcast do I listen to? So I mostly listen to like comedy podcasts, honestly. So like Bad Friends, Tiger Belly, Take Your Shoes Off, Mark Maron's podcast, Whiskey Ginger, all those ones. But in terms of like non-comedy ones, I like this one called Make Art Not Content super valuable for artists, creatives, designers. Gary Vincent showed me that one and I really like it. Um, there's one called Ear Hustle that's really cool where it's the psychologist and doctor and this prisoner that do this. Uh, they did this podcast from like San Quentin, which was really cool. Um, Lex Friedman's podcast is cool too. And then I also watched this like MF Doom audio like story podcast thing. It was like 14 episodes, just a one-off series. It was called, did I ever tell you the one about MF Doom? That was really good if you're a fan of MF Doom or hip hop, I suggest checking that out. How old am I and where do you see yourself in 10 years? I'm 24 and honestly, I it's so hard to even answer that kind of stuff. I always regret asking get podcast guests and stuff, things like that, because even five years ago, I couldn't imagine what I'd be doing now. I was barely in college, like trying to figure out and hopefully I'd be thinking, I hope I even can get a job when I graduate. Now I'm kind of doing my own thing, already freelancing and living in LA. It's really cool and I never thought I'd even be there. So trying to judge that, I mean, um, if I keep on this track, I mean, it seems like really cool shit will be going on in 10 years and I hope so. And I hope I can just even keep this level of what I'm doing as a baseline. But I do have a lot of goals and aspirations. So hopefully I'm the YouTube either grew a lot or I already did all this stuff and I'm done with it. Same with the podcast. I'm working with cool clients. I have my own art practice and maybe I have like an external studio with multiple people and we all kind of work on stuff, stuff like that would be cool. And this kind of goes into that last question also, how long have you been doing design post like college, I guess, when I have a degree in the professional world or whatever of design, it would have, it would be three, four years. But honestly, I've been doing design since like I was like a junior, senior in high school. So that's a lot longer. It might not have been good design, but I was at least trying honestly like eight years or so, I think is like the actual answer three or four years or eight years, whatever, however you want to look at it. If you want a deeper look into my life as a designer, you can check out this video here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. See you next time. Peace.